Autumn Runs to Darkness, Bill Murtaugh. The Wild Meadows of Love, The Twinges and Ecstasies of Imagination and Mortality. To enter Bill Murtaugh's poems is to become immersed in so many lyric experiences of nature and sensuality, graced with humor and wisdom. His rhythms flow like water, so jump in and ride the tides. You'll row up shore luminous and excited about language, life, and yourself. Then look up at the sky, where Bill's images gleam like stars. Will you welcome, please, Bill Murtaugh? Hello. Hello. Hi. Can everybody hear me in the back? Let's do this. All right. Yes. Thank you. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. All right. I just uh, am so honored to be here. Uh, Louisa, that was just a beautiful story. Uh, just to have Holly Haybush. Isn't she doing a job? She's so incredibly gracious. I don't know. <laughs> It's an honor to be in this spot, though. You know, when you get down about the scum on your pond, all you have to do is look out at the Milwaukee River, and it's clean, almost getting there. Yeah. And we've got the Urban Ecology Center here. What an honor to be in this place, which all, you know, it's just incredible. And it kind of leads me, the first two poems I'm, I'm going to read, the first two are really about the river. And, uh, you know, I remember Jeff Ponievich struggling mightily to preserve the beautiful prairie that once was where the pick and save is, where the old rail yard was, where you could buy your sand at Pipcorns. And that beautiful space was taken. And then the two dormitories popped up. But because this place was here, because these people here had done this wonderful work, and because others preserved the bike trail, we now have this park running all the way to the end of town. Yeah. <clears throat> well, this first poem I wrote in 1976, or it's when I started writing it. My daughter was born, and I had to get a job. And the first place I worked was Galoon Tannery. And Galoon Tannery was just evaporated from the earth. The last brick was taken out a month ago. And I'm, I unloaded the last boxcar that came with hides in it. Just think of brisket. Anyway, it came with hides, a, a whole, whole load of hides. And you know, that was the last railroad car. And I used to walk down and look at that beautiful landscape that was the prairie that's now the pick and save. But thank God I've got the rest of the river to live in. And this is a poem about having to go to work and what it was like to walk down through that beauty. It's called Walking to Work Across the Humboldt Street Dam at Dawn. I am alone and silent and slowly tunnel under trees that lean and touch over sidewalks, a tent of darkness shedding pollen. The husks of their wet scented blossoms pad my reluctant feet dragging me relentlessly out into sudden space where I am so high up I see the curving river break the bluffs apart. Clouds dance over hobbled houses and graveled streets. A long light slants on these heads of hills. A city sleeps breathing in damp. And there is a peace that streams across the sills of a thousand windows cracked where curtains flow and shiver in the breeze that lets me slowly down the river split green interruption of my town. Downhill past the switchman's shack, a freight car in the old train yard looms, a box of silence rusting on the tracks, the only sound buzzing flies and crickets that leap from fives on spurs, and an, an engine that erupts the sleeping birds all far away and flying. 
I scan bluffs where swimmers used to go. Terrace stairs lead into brush. Old landings rot, piles jut among the swamping reeds. Over the dam, a sounding water churns to a great brass plate. The pounded pockets of the dented waves hammer on the river, a light that shakes from the molten haze of the brightening sun. In the stream, water bugs squirt like a circus before they dive into a fish. A northern comes to surface for a fly, parting the sweet flesh of the river with its lip, leaving concentric, slight circles of waves to slide across the skin of the water. And before schooning gulls comes their shadow, and the shadow of death. Shimmering fish plunge. A turtle snaps on emptiness as they pass into the depths. Upstream factories hum and snap as if alive, as if their doors yawned to swallow us, as if their windows were a hundred fluorescent eyes, shutting shades to close against us like a lid upon our days. Upstream factories crouch in huge clouds. The bluff hides all but their horns that poke the sky and exhaust plumes out, so feathered with the rain that I shrink with the trees. In a furnace full of cries, what melts is more than steel, what dies is more than time. From the small peak of the spire in my church-top city of the clocks, when the gong and the quarter hour knock, I am gone down the riverside and running up the walk. Pigeons wind and wheel over streets and cables, poles sit like stitches on the curbs and sew up these hills and hold the houses tangled, gathered on either side of roads. Crooked buildings hang in rows, bars open up the dawn. Tar roofs and chimneys swathe in early sun, gates go unlatched and windows cracked, and torn curtains like dreams unspun a restless sleep as brief as dew on their small patch of grass. Now a metal grinding rips my ears. As I hurry past, a whistle shouts. Workers creep in, a shift runs out, and I, I am late again. <laughs> <laughs>